sewing. And before we start sewing, we need to figure out a few things, including what our seam allowance is going to be. And the easiest way to do that is to look at your actual pattern. This is the um, instructions inside the envelope, the very first page, and it actually has the information right here. So this pattern, it says, has 5 8 inch seam allowance included, which means the difference between the line I cut and the line I'm going to sew is 5 eighths of an inch, which is 1.5 centimeters. So it's important to know that when you go to sew because that's how we know it's going to fit. If you change your seam allowance, you're going to change the way it fits. It was intended to be sewn together to fit the measurements that you took that you sew it out of 5 eighths inch. Now the nice thing is 5 eighths inch is a lot. So in one pattern piece from one side to the other, if you add 5 eighths to 5 eighths, you've got more than an inch room for fitting, which is a super nice thing when you have a nice wide seam allowance. Now in knits, that's not as um, important usually as it is in a woven because the knit has stretch and as a rule, knits have a narrower seam allowance. Now this pattern gave us a nice wide seam allowance, which is great, but because I'm going to personally sew this together on my overlock machine, my serger, it's going to cut off the excess. I'm going to sew on the 5 8 inch line, but all the excess that was between the 5 8 and my stitching line is going to get cut away. That's what the serger does. Now if you're sewing on your sewing machine, you're going to go ahead and leave those extra seam allowances in there, and I'm going to show you how to set up your machine um, so that when you're sewing with a knit, you won't end up with pop stitches. If you straight stitch together a knit and you go to put it on, the knit will give, your stitch will not, and the stitch will actually snap. And you'll end up, and I'm sure you've bought clothes like this, you've worn clothes like this many times where you had little snap stitches along your hem or along the side seam and you had a little hole starting to show. That's because the thread did not give, your stitch did not give along with the fabric. Now you can stress any stitch and end up popping it if you're not careful. But necklines are the worst. I think necklines, it happens all the time on t-shirts because we have to pull that thing over our head and if they made the neckline too tight and the stitch too tight, we just snap, and you can hear it, it goes pop, 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 pop as you go and put it on. So I'm going to show you how to set up your regular sewing machine to work with a stretchy fabric so that you don't, you are less likely to get snapped stitches. And I'm also going to show you how to do it on my serger because that's how I'm going to put together my project. It will be constructed on the overlock machine and finished on my sewing machine. But you could do the entire thing if you have a sewing machine with a zigzag option on just a regular sewing machine. Okay, so on my sewing machine, I have buttons over here that change my width and my length. So you will have something that changes width and length on your sewing machine, and I get to choose what kind of stitch I want. Now you want to make sure that you don't have a straight stitch foot on, which I did a minute ago, because the first time it goes to stitch, it'll snap your needle off on the foot. So I have a nice wide um, foot. This is called an open toe foot. So I have my open toe foot on, and I'm going to choose a zigzag. All right, and it tells me right now, see the little zigzag? Can you see that little tiny stitch? That's the zigzag that it has, and that's kind of what I want. I don't want a real wide zigzag like this because um, it's less attractive on the outside of the garment. You want it to be close to a straight stitch, but not quite. Okay, so that's the stitch I'm going to choose. And it's, see how it says 1.5, that's the width. I'm sorry, the width is 1.3 and the length is 1.5. That's about right. It's a kind of a tiny little narrow stitch. It's gonna look really nice. The thing is, it's small enough though that if you have to seam rip it, it's gonna be a problem. So I'm actually gonna lengthen my stitch just a little bit to two. And we're gonna try it out and see how it looks. And this is, I'm just gonna show on my machine. Let me pull back. This is my width and my length stitch selector to change my width and my length. This is just to change the different stitches. So this is the most basic way, just a plain old zigzag, and you adjust it. Now some machines don't let you adjust. You choose zigzag and you've got like a big and small, choose your smallest zigzag that's not stacked. You don't want a satin stitch. You want it kind of spread apart. All right, so now we're going to sew it. Okay, so I've just got a scrap of fabric here and I'm going to set my machine Set my fabric in on the 5 8 inch line, and I don't have it lined up perfectly, but this is just a sample to see how our stitches look. I always take a scrap of fabric before I start sewing and see how my stitch looks before I put my whole garment together. So this is my practice stitch. Let's see how it looks. OK, 
Can you see how the tiniest amount of zigzag it's doing? All right, so I'm just going to pull that out and let's look at it. Okay, can, I'm going to try and get this close. Can you see that stitch? All right, so when I open this up, that's what the outside would look like. It looks straight stitched. It looks good, but it gives. It has some stretch. Let me close it. I'm doing this one handed, which makes it a little hard, but it has some stretch. Can you see that? It gives, it has some give, but it's sturdy. It's not going to fall apart. So I, I like that stitch. I think that's what I'm going to do. If I felt like it didn't give enough, I could do a little bit tiny, a little bit wider stitch, but this is, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's the stitch we will use if you were on a regular sewing machine to put the whole thing together. That's one of your options. Now, if you have a machine with lots of stitches, see all these different stitches, you could choose something like this, like this. Those are overlock stitches. I'm going to choose number 10 and show you what that looks like, okay? All right, so here we are stitching number 10 on my machine. I've already done a few stitches, so just so you can see how wide it stitches. It straights, zigs over, goes back, and it kind of crosses back and forth. And by doing this, between between where this stitch stopped and this one before it began, there's a little space, and then it zigs across. And this makes it for a very flat, stable stitch, but there's room between where it um, connects on each side that allows the fabric to give. So now I'm gonna pull it off and show you how it looks when you open it up. All right, so here's the stitch. Can you see that? it over a little bit on the back you can see how soft the fabric is this is where I started broke my stitches and started again so it's a little crooked right there but you can see how nice the stitch looks all right and then when I open it up you have a nice flat seam now this is sort of like to um, simulate what the overlock machine does and if you did this you could actually trim off your excess next to you leave a little tiny bit but you trim it off next to that stitch if you wanted to and it's a stretch that's very stable a stitch that's very stable but will give I always have a hard time doing this with one hand but it does stretch all right I'm at my serger this is a burn old Bernina it's over 30 years old um, it has four threads as you can see four big cones back there these are the two needles. These are the upper and lower looper. Here's my foot and there's two needles right there. Down, They're down in the machine at the moment. Over here I have an, um, to engage or disengage for a rolled hem. This is for how wide my blade is. So that's how wide my stitch is gonna be in the end. This is my stitch length and this is my differential feed. It's got a hand wheel just like my other sewing machine. It is a type of sewing machine. You cannot do everything on a serger. If you own a serger, you still need a sewing machine. If you have a sewing machine, you don't have to have a serger. But I love having my overlock. It's technically an overlock. Serger is, is, is a slang, I guess. Um, but I love my machine. So I'm gonna, I've got it all set up for how I think I need it to be. I'm going to do my practice stitch like I did before on the sewing machine just like it's going to be. So I've got it set up to cut off a little bit. So I've got it set up for my 5 8 inch. And when I put this in, I literally lift the toe and slide it in instead of raising and lowering the presser foot. That's just my personal preference. And now we're gonna stitch. It's probably gonna be a little noisy on the camera. You can see it, can you see it cutting away? It has big heavy feed dogs. That's the tail. You always want to leave a tail. And then I let my machine cut its own tail off. So that's how I trim my threads. This is the back of the stitch. This is the front of the stitch. And now let me open it up. That's what it will look like on the outside. Pretty seam. And it does stretch. It's very stable. You're going to get a lot less popped stitches. With something like this but 
not super stretchy, which is okay. We don't want it to be, we're not doing swimwear. So I'm gonna show again, this is the front. That's what the front stitch looks like. You've got two needles and this is your front looper, or your upper looper. This is the back and it's harder to see. You don't really see your needle stitches as much, but you see a lot of, this is your back or your lower looper. All right, so I'm really happy with how that looks and this is how I'm going to put my garment together. All right, so I unpin as I go. I'm just gonna turn this a little bit. So I don't unpin everything and put away my pattern pieces. As I use a pattern piece, I unpin it and then at the very end, I iron everything up and put it away. So this is, um, I'm gonna start with my front and my back. I'm gonna unpin the two and I'm going to pin them together at the shoulder seam. So I have pinned together my two shoulder seams like this. And now I'm going to set them up under the machine. Now I always sew, or I try to always sew, with the front side on top. I just like that because the serger does make a little bit different stitch from top from the top to the bottom, I like that the front of the garment um, seams all look the same and the back of the garment seams all look the same. So as much as possible, I will sew that way. So I'm going to line this up. I may have to take my hand away, there we go. All right, so we're lining up. so you have some good light and once I get this arranged exactly right I get it pretty close to the knife but not exactly and the way I can tell the front of the garment has a lower neckline than the back so you can actually see some of the front and almost always like 99% of the time you're gonna sew right sides together so you can see I have the wrong side of my fabric um, which there we go which means that the stitch and the ugly stuff will be on the inside. It's not necessarily ugly, but it's the part we don't want to see. And the outside will just have a nice smooth seam. All right, I'm going to pull out my first pin. And we're going to sew our two shoulders together. And I'm guiding this. You don't have to push it through at all. It has very sturdy feed dog, so the, the machine does the work. And I'm just gonna pull my pins out as I go, keeping my two edges as perfectly together as possible. Now, the difference with a serger and a sewing machine is a sewing machine you'd stop and backstitch here. With a serger, you don't do that. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna break my threads. I'm just gonna bring up my next shoulder seam and line it up and pull out that pin. Now, if this were going to be, um, I'm gonna stop sewing when I talk. If this were just the edge and not gonna be finished, we'd have to do something to finish that edge off so that they didn't, the threads didn't pull apart. But because every seam I'm making is going to be crossed with another seam, I don't have to worry about backstitching. If you're at the sewing machine, you backstitch. All it takes is two to three stitches, just backstitch a couple times, you don't have to backstitch very far, and it locks those stitches in and it holds your garment together better. All right, and now, that's how it looks right now. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim apart so now those two are separate and now it's attached detached from the machine and I have two shoulder seams now your the pattern may give you specific directions exactly how they want to sew it together I've sewn long enough that I have my own preferences I like to do for something like the t-shirt I do the two shoulder seams and then I can go ahead and put the neckline in if I want to, or I can put the sleeves in. So I have two options. I'm not gonna sew the entire body together first. You can, and when you're doing sleeves, you have two options. You could sew the body together and set the sleeve in, but on a t-shirt, it's much easier to do the flat option, where you pin the sleeve in, sew the sleeve, and then when you go to sew up, you sew the whole side seam, including into the sleeve. It's just a simpler and faster way to sew. And for a t-shirt, it's appropriate. It's not appropriate if you're doing a blouse, 
an, a men's dress shirt, something like that. But for a t-shirt, it's perfectly fine. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to do the neckline next because necklines stretch out. The more, and I'll actually, if I just hold this up, just the weight of this can stretch your neckline out. And I don't want that to happen. Sometimes you can do a little basting stitch to hold it together, but I, I'm sewing this together fast enough. Um, I'm not too worried about it and I don't pull and stretch. You do not want to be pulling and stretching against this curved raw neckline. You will have, your neckline will be huge. It'll just stretch and stretch and stretch in a knit. It will do that even in a woven fabric because there's bias areas that will stretch out. So the very next thing I'm gonna do is my neckline. So the neck on this is just a long skinny piece. Sometimes um, you can choose to make, I'm making it out of the cell fabric, it's gonna be the two, the same fabric. You could choose to buy ribbing fabric, which is a special type of knit that's a little heavier, it's, it's, a, it's knitted differently. You can actually see little lines in it. It's extremely stretchy and ribbing's wonderful. The thing with necklines for t-shirts is you want this piece, this little um, piece that we're going to attach to be actually to measure smaller than the neckline of the garment. So I'm gonna sew it together in a circle first. So I've just got end to end. Here's my folded edge, end to end. And I'm just gonna sew this first. And then I'm gonna pin it in and make sure this is a tiny bit smaller. If it's the exact same size, you will have a flip up. It looks bad. It'll flip up and it won't look appropriate. You want it to be a little bit smaller to stretch to the neckline. So we're just gonna sew this across. All right, and now I'm going to pin it together and I'll show you how that looks. For this garment, you're gonna actually take your circle that I just sewed and we're gonna turn it to the outside. We're gonna line it up like this and we're gonna fold it in half. So seam on seam like this and then we're gonna pin it, all right? All right, so I'm gonna do that first to get the two pieces lined up perfectly and you want your edges to line up really well like that, okay? So I'm gonna pin that and then I'll show you how to put it in. Just wanna show you this is all I'm doing is folding in half. I'm not stretching at all. I'm making my edges line up perfectly and I'm just putting pins in every about four, four inches or so, three to four inches. A lot of times I will take this over to the ironing board um, just because I have a nice flat open surface with nothing else on it and it just gives you room to work. But because of how we're set up today, I'm just going to do it right here. Okay, so now we're pinned in a circle and it should look like that. And now I'm gonna compare it to my neckline. Here's my neckline. I always take this seam that I've sewn and I either put it at a shoulder seam or at the center back. You don't want it in the front of your garment at all. You don't want to see this seam. Professional, if you want it to look professional, you want to look like it was well constructed and thought out, putting this seam somewhere in the front is going to look like you made a mistake. It's going to look like you didn't think it through. So I usually will just do shoulder seam because it makes it easy. Um, but if it feels too bulky, because see there's a seam there and a seam there, if it feels too, bul too, bu too bulky, go to the center back and it's really easy to mark center front and center back. So what I do is I line up my two shoulder seams on top of each other like this. All right, and not stretching, just gently lining it up. There's my center back and I'm going to put a pin in it. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the center front. Again, don't stretch it, just line it up nice and even. And put a pin in it. Now this, now this will help me when I go to put my neckline in. Now if you look, can you see 
the, the back of the shirt is much smaller than the front. So if I were to divide this neckline out using the shoulder seams as our side, it wouldn't be even. So now I'm going to find, I'm going to line up these, and I'm going to find the center of this. Now it won't be the shoulder seam, it's going to be towards the front because the front of the neckline is larger. So we're going to gently pull and see, this is actually centered. This is going to help me get my neckline on evenly. So I'm going to put a pin in that. This is a really important step you don't want to skip. And again, I'm not pulling, I'm just lining up. And there's that. All right, so now I'm ready to do to pin the two pieces together. Okay, so I'm gonna take my neckline, right sides together, see the right side is out, right sides together, and I'm gonna use that center back seam to the center back of, or the seam, to the center back of my garment. So I'm gonna line the two of them up, ignore my tails for a minute, I'm gonna leave them on there while I'm sewing. All right. And we're going to pin those together. And these two are going to be married. I'm going to just reuse this pin and stick it in. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this neckline, not pulling hard just to get it straight. And I'm going to find my center front on it. Okay, this is my center front. I'm going to move my pin to the center front. Pink pin is center front. And this green pin is center front of my shirt. I'm going to marry those two. Whoops, got my fingers in the wrong place. Hold on. There we go. So now those two are going to be married to each other. And I'm putting the pin to hold those two together. So now I have my neck and make sure it's not twisted in two places. This is the next centered piece, so now I have to find the center of the neckline again. Fold in half. Pull it straight. Whoops, my pin head stuck. Pull it straight without stretching. There's my side. There we go. I'm going to put a pin in that. This pin is going to correspond to this pin, so now I have quartered my neckline. I have evenly measured it out into four quarters. Well, I've got three done. I've got one more to do. So now we're gonna do this one. And you can almost see, like you can see, actually, this neckline is not, I would like it tighter, personally. I think this is how she designed it, but not my favorite. But you can actually see how it's fitting in there just right. This is my next one. All right. So now my neckline is partially pinned in. I'm just going to pin between now, keeping it nice and even to keep all those pieces together. And before I sew it, I'm gonna look at it. Now here is, this because of the way I sewed it, I can tell this is my back of my shirt and this is my back seam. I'm gonna flip it to the back. You want all of your seams to flow to the back. So. The front is smooth, this is turned to the back, back of the garment. Same with this one. Move that pin to hold. I just want to hold that down. And you can see from the outside, this is what it's going to look like. Once it's sewn, it's going to look like that. So you can actually see how it's going to look already before we've even stitched it. It's very important that you keep all of your edges together. You don't want it to be like that where it see how it slides down. When you go to sew, it's going to um, have issues. So if you have an area that wants to slide down, put an extra pin in it. All right. Now if you're sewing this with your sewing machine, you're going to still sew it with the same tiny zigzag all the way around. All right. That's pinned in. That's what it looks like. Now, when I flip it up, when it, and it's just gonna get sewn on the 5 8 inch. See how that one's wanting to pull apart? Can you see the three, you can see three seam edges, or three edge, cut edges. We're gonna line those back up and put a pin in it. It's real important to keep all of those pieces together. And if it's 
slippery fabric or just fabric that has a mind of its own, it may not want to. We're ready to sew. Now, just like before where I wanted everything to flow in the same direction, I always start this at the center back. And how do I know where the center back is after putting all these pins in? Well, I have in this neck casing piece a seam right there. That's my center back because I started there. I purposely put it there. And I see this is sliding apart. So I'm going to start stitching there. Make sure these are all lined up. I do not want... It's easy, especially for the bottom piece when you're sewing, to slide down. And you won't know it till you're through and you'll have a little hole. All right, so now these are ready to go together at my machine. Now, I have one issue because I'm at the serger. Um, I want to sew 5 8 inch, and because there's a knife in the way, I can't slide the whole fabric over 5 8 of an inch. So there's two things I can do. I could start at the quarter inch and zoom in and then even out. Not my favorite way to do it. What I usually do is actually make a little nip, or I will go ahead and cut off a tiny bit to start and then let the machine do the rest. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my scissors out. And I'm going to make a little area where I'm starting. I'm going to make sure it's pinned really well. I'm going to actually stick another pin just for holding it way out here away from where I'm stitching. Okay, so up here where I'm going to start sewing, I'm going to trim off a tiny bit of my seam allowance. This is just for the serger. If you're at the sewing machine, you don't even have to worry about that. Okay, can you see that? That's how much my machine cuts off. Now, when I go to put this in, I'm going to line this all the way up. And I'm going to move just so you can see. See how that slides in there to the to the um, to the needles? Okay, that's what I'm doing. Sliding that all the way in, like that's for stitching. Okay, so I'm going to set you back down carefully. All right, so now I'm going to do that. Set the foot down. Now you don't want to stretch this. You don't want to pull it. You just want to let it sew. Now that I've got it lined up, <clears throat> I'm going to pull out these extra pins. I'm going to go slow because I have so many pins. And as I'm going, I'm going to continually check that all of my layers are together. This is the back of the garment, so I want to make sure that my seam is going the direction I want it to. That it doesn't flip over when it gets close to the blade or the needles. I just want you to see, you can see how it kind of cups in. That's nice. That's going to lay nicer against the neckline instead of flipping up or flipping over. See, these pins are all pinned so that I can pull them out as I sew. See, this one isn't. I'm going to fix that now because that's an easy way to accidentally sew over a pin. I try to always pin so that the knee, I can grab the pin. I'm right-handed and go this direction. If you're left-handed, you would pin it this way. So you can pull that direction. Sometimes I pin for left-handed so that my hand's not in the way of the camera, <laughs> just to make it easier. Because it, but it depends on where I set the camera up to. I tend to check the whole time I'm sewing. Now, see how this is folded over? If you're sewing fast and not paying attention at a serger, you could cut that right off and your garment's just ruined. That's the shoulder seam and you just have to start over. So you have to be at the serger much more aware, cognitive of what you're doing because it's really easy to make a more dramatic mistake. At the sewing machine, if you don't rip a hole, you can just keep cutting or you can just rip it out and sew it again. At the serger, at the overlock, because it does cut as you sew, 
If you make a mistake, it can make a permanent hole in your garment and it's not going to be fixable. Almost all the way around, you can see this is where I started. I'm to the back, so I'm going to make sure my seam is folded correctly. Make sure we're lined up and not pulling away. And I'm just going to stitch across my old stitches. It's sort of like back stitching. I now have a neckline. Okay, so that's how the neckline looks. It's nice and small, and I'm going to just flip it around to the right side for you for a minute so you can see how it lays. Now, I like, I often, when I'm designing my own patterns, I, I will make this little neckline piece um, about two inches, two to four inches smaller than the neckline opening, and all that does is make it cup in. This one's maybe an inch and a half. It's not, I would probably have made it if I were designing this myself a little, a little shorter. Um, it just pulls the neckline, especially because it's such a wide neckline, um, instead of getting a saggy neck. Or if it's too wide, what happens is it just flips over like that. We don't want that. That's not pretty. Okay, so now we're ready for sleeves. I'm doing a lace sleeve and there is a right and a wrong on lace. Um, sometimes it's so hard to tell, it's not to worry about, but this, if I'm going to, can you see this? Okay, all right. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. The wrong side's very flat. The right side has lots of dimension. So I, it's easy to tell the right and the wrong. Now, we also have a right and a left sleeve. So I'm going to pull this off. If you can see, there's my single notch. So I'm going to pull off just one sleeve. This one right here, and there's my little single notch, and I know the single notch goes in the front. Okay, so I'm going to leave the other sleeve on there for now so I don't get confused. I'm just going to pin it in one corner. And I also want to mark, all right, am I off completely? There's one more pin somewhere. All right. All right, so now I have... That's my front, but I want to go in with a pin and I'm going to mark this little circle. That's my shoulder, where my shoulder seam is. So I'm just going to line this up. Because I don't think I did a cut. It's a little hard because it's holy to do a cut in this one. Line up that one because I did get a cut there. Okay, this is where that is. And I'm just going to put a pin in it. I don't, on light colored stuff like this, I don't always do a lot of marking with chalk um, on these kinds of projects, but I do on others. So this, this particular one I'm not. So I know this is my front right here. So I'm gonna find the front of my shirt. And I wanna put right side to right side. So here's the front, here's the back. And I'm just gonna start right there and I'm pinning right side to right side and then I'm going to find my shoulder seam and I'm going to do shoulder seam to shoulder seam or shoulder marking to shoulder seam put a pin in that and then I'm going to come down and pin this other edge now the way sleeves are designed there is, it's very fitted under the arm. You don't have fullness under the arm, which is on purpose. So this area right here, this area is gonna fit perfectly. And then there'll be some ease in the top part where the shoulder is. That's where your wearing ease is. So under here, there's no gathering, there's no anything to fit. It should fit together perfectly. Usually the notches actually help us know. See, here's my double notch in the back. All right, so this area right here, there's no fitting to be done. It fits perfectly together. I'm gonna to do that on both sleeves. In the arm's eye, this part fits great. Okay, so now 
where there may be some wearing ease is just in this top shoulder. And you can see the sleeve's bigger. See how the sleeve is bigger? And it's usually biggest in the back because that's just the way our bodies are built. We need more room in the back of our shoulder. So now we're just going to, because this is knit, it makes it super easy. If this were woven, we'd do some basting stitches, but I'm just going to line these up and ease it in on its own like this. You can see just a little bit of fullness. I'd rather have lots of extra pins to pull out than make a mistake because I wasn't careful. And I'm not stretching this a lot, but if I need to stretch it a tiny bit to make it fit, I will. And the two fabrics will just, um, it kind of evens itself out between the two with once the stitches are in. Now see, I have a little bubble. I'm just going to work that out in the next. I'm going to take this pin out and see how it just worked itself right in. Okay, now this is ready to sew. There's two ways you can do it. You can sew it with the sleeve on top or the sleeve on the bottom. And if you look, can you just see the slight fullness there? It fits fine at the edge, but there's a little bit of fullness. That's how it should be. That's for our shoulder, so it goes in our body right. I usually sew with the sleeve on the bottom. The feed dogs of the machine ease in anything extra and it makes it nice and smooth. So you just have to pay attention that you don't get a fold over or something. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the top or the blouse on the top and the sleeve on the bottom. Line it up to cut off my 5 8 inch and you can see here's my, my tails it's been cutting off. All right, and we're ready to stitch. I'm constantly checking to make sure I don't have something folded up, keeping my fingers underneath, pulling from this side, not pulling to stretch it, just pulling to keep it smooth and straight. And this is a curved seam, so you can see this is actually the shape. It doesn't, it's not straight, so I'm going to carefully guide it straight in allowing it to take its natural curve because that curve is important. This is the flat method of sewing in a sleeve. Not every sleeve can be sewn in this way, but most t-shirts can be. The lace underneath has enough body that it's actually wanting to push it up just a tiny bit at the knife. You can see see that, see how it wants to do that. That's actually the weight of the lace below the lightweight knit, put pushing it up. So I'm using my fingers below to give it a little bit of guidance so it doesn't fold over and get in the way of the stitching. Oh, I let go. There we go. Yeah, that lace is giving a little bit of a run for the money on that lightweight. So here's the two pieces together. That's how they look stitched together. And I'm going to show you right where I was sewing and it flipped up. I'm just going to pull this up. Can you see that little piece of fabric? The right side's flipped over. It's caught inside and it won't give you any issues. It's fine. You can't see anything from this side. So there's one sleeve in. That's how it looks. I always kind of inspect to make sure I don't have a pleat or a fold over or something, and I don't. So there's the two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and do the other sleeve exactly the same way, and then I'll show you what to do next. I just want to look, show you real quick on the back side, I'm pinning in my other sleeve. This is the neckline, and here's my stitch, my seam that I've made sure is pushed to the back. So this is the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, and I have it folded along the seam line towards the back. If I was not careful, if I were not careful, and I didn't pin this, see how I could easily pin this seam the wrong direction and you'd have this fold in it. And first of all, it's uncomfortable to wear, but secondly, you will always have a little tiny hump in your shoulder seam or whatever 
because of this folded piece. So it's very important to make sure your seams match on each side and that they're going the right direction. So this is the front of the blouse, this is the back, the seam, here's my stitching line, and the whole seam allowance is pushed to the back side, to the back. And that's true for the side seam too. That's traditionally what you do. All seams and darts flow to the back. Okay. Right here you can see this is my where my sleeve and my shirt join and I want to just make sure that those seam allowances are pushed back onto the shirt side and not into the sleeve at the underarm. And that's specifically because I have a lace or slightly sheer sleeve and I just don't want to see the seam allowance in there. And this is, so I've sewn from hem to the sleeve in one piece and I'll flip it around so you can see what it looks like on the outside. Now, you wanna be careful, look at, can you see how that lines up exactly right, right there? If you get off, you know, you, it could look really bad. So we wanna make sure that's right. There's our lace. So now let me hold it up. All right, and there it is. Okay, now that was the easy side. I'm gonna do it again on this side. Um, what we did, because you kind of came in in the middle of the stitching there, what we're doing is we are pinning right sides together, right at the sleeve edge, right at the underarm seam, pushing those seam allowances to the sleeve side and at the hem. Now this side, because of the pattern we chose, um, it actually has a little slit in the hem. So we're going to, can you see the little notch right here? We're gonna line up our notch, and that's as far as we're going to stitch with the serger. And then, well, what we'll do is we'll stitch down, it'll, it'll make like a little L, it'll actually come and turn the corner. Then we'll finish this, this will get finished with the hem that little cutout, okay? So if you don't want the cutout, you could just serge all the way down, cut it off if you wanted to, but I, I like the little, I think it's gonna be cute, so I'm gonna leave the fun little vent in the side, whoops. So we're now that we've got everything evenly pinned, we're just putting our edges together. And again, want to find the front, and whatever the front of the shirt is, that's gonna go on the top. So this is, this is the front. So this is going on top. So this is where I'm, where I'm gonna start. Put it underneath. And again, I, instead of sewing all the way to the hem, I'm gonna sew to right here, and then I'm gonna turn the corner and come straight off, okay? And then I'll show you how we'll finish our hem. We are almost, done with this pattern. So fast and easy. I'm gonna hang on to this because it wants to fold over. Whoop. Don't get your fingers in there though, that knife is sharp. See are my tails, there we go. See, if I let go, see how it pulls it back in? That's just because of the weight of the fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna set the camera down so I can use two hands for stitching. And take care of that issue. 
out make sure my seam allowances are pushed to the sleeve or to the shirt and not the sleeve always checking to make sure it's flat and there's no fold overs and that my edges are lined up perfectly Here is that notch, and this is how I'm going to handle it. And so now, there's my notch. Okay, now we're ready for hemming. Super fast, fun, and easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the edge with the serger, and then we will do the hemming at the actual sewing machine. So I'm going to open up. This is the vent, and here's my front side. And I'm going to, now I'm going to do this with the right side up so that the pretty side of my serger stitch is on the right side of my fabric. And I'm putting it along the edge. I'm not cutting anything off now. Now that we're to hemming, I just want this serger stitch on the edge of the fabric only. So I'm going to just put it with the edge of my machine. And this is super lightweight and a lot of thread. There we go. Not stretching it. I'm going to bring you in close so you can see. That's what the stitch looks like when it's coming out the back. And I want to make sure, here's my, my seam, I want to make sure that's pushed to the back. And the easy way to do this is just to hold it. You want to make sure you don't get a pleat in it. Okay. All right, so there's my vent. Now we're just going to go around the hem. Here's my side seam. I want to make sure that seam pushed to the back and because I made sure to sew with the right side in the front, I know that when I push it so I can see the right side of my seam, that it's pushed to the back. So I'm just going to finger press it a little bit to the back like that. I've got my tail there too, to help, but I can feel it through the fabric. And I'm not stretching at all for any of this. You don't want to stretch out hem. Now, if you stretch it out when you're doing this part, when you go to do the hem, you're not going to have a nice smooth hem. And there we are. I'm going to just show you the corner here. This is where my two seams crossed. And that's how it looks. Okay, so now we're ready for hemming. Okay, we're back at the ironing board for a minute. I'm going to make sure my iron is ready. Whenever I iron something like this for the first time, I test it out with a sample. So before I take it to my garment, I'm going to use my, this is my sample that I did earlier, uh, my little serger sample, so I'm going to use it. So let's see if it's getting hot. My iron, I can turn it on, but until I tip it over, it doesn't actually turn on. And I'm just going to press my, this first to make sure that we have no issues, that it's not gonna see, if, I don't know if you can see the metallic in this, sometimes some of these um, 
applications that they put these glitter applications that sort of thing will stick to the iron or will melt to the iron so I want to make sure none of that happens um, again when you're ironing you don't want to stretch but it irons out beautifully and I just want you to see ironing is so important when you're sewing and look at the stitch look at the seam it looks so much better when it's ironed it almost completely disappears in the fabric so ironing is vital even if you never iron again iron while you sew all right so now we're ready I'm gonna iron my hemline that's the whole point of this testing that out is for my hem so this is the vent and the little side slit and behave itself now there's two ways with a vent let me pull this up here where you can see this is my hem edge some people and this is will hem the bottom first then fold the vent over so from the outside you always have this perfect edge and that's what I tend to like to do I'm going to do my best to line this up and we're going to do the hem around the bottom first and I'm going to get out my little ruler this is my little ruler and I'm turning up about an inch not quite an inch let me see and you can adjust this however you want like I, the, I think the pattern is set up for three quarters of an inch I need to read it and maybe five eighths I want a little bit of a deep hem because it hangs nice and it's plenty long enough that I have a little bit to play with um, if you're really petite you may actually take off some it may just be too long or it could be a dress like this is a, such a long piece uh, this, long, this is such a long garment that you could practically wear it like a dress with leggings or something so all I'm going to do is use my ruler as I go around and make sure it's turned up at three quarters of an inch like this and as I get it pinned I'm going to come in with my iron and press it I'm not going to press on the pin heads let me move this out because I don't want to press any wrinkles into my garment on the metal part of the pin but not the pin head like that okay and when you do that when you go to the machine yeah see it does want to kind of stick the little metal the little metallic thread so I'm gonna be pretty careful about that I could pin this and I think I will I could pin it for sewing I want the pin on that edge but for pressing sometimes from this angle so you can see it I'm gonna flip my pins don't pin to the ironing board okay so if I pin it like that Now when I iron, I can avoid those pins pretty easily. And I'm just gently pressing. This is ironing, this is pressing, and I'm pressing. I am pressing down just on that folded edge. And it makes a crease. And then when I go to my machine, it's much easier to sew. So I'm gonna do that all the way around my hem and specifically being careful again of this seam line see how I have it's pinned down here it's already stitched down so I just want to make sure that when I pin it I don't let it flip over that it stays going the right direction and I'm actually going to hit that a little bit from the inside with my iron just because it's going to make for a prettier garment so I'm going to just gently and when you press your seams, you want to make sure your seam is flat. You don't want any fold over, so you get a little um, pleated fold right at your seam line. That never looks nice. All right, so I press that out. Look at how pretty that makes that seam look. And now, when I fold this up at that seam, so it takes a while. This is a long hem. It's asymmetrical and wide. So I'm going to do that all the way around this whole hem and when I'm done I'll get back with you I just want to show you if there's a slight curve in your fabric and this one does have just the slightest curve in the hemline one nice thing about knit is it makes it much easier so I'm actually laying this out got it pretty close to where I need it to be I could put pins in it if I want to um, just to make sure it stays put but I, I've just measured around to make sure that I'm where I need to be and 
you can press it like that and you've got a nice smooth curve. Now, what pressing does, let me just open this up. Can you see that edge? It just makes it want to stay there. It's just like it keeps your hem permanent. So you want to make sure if you do this that you have your hem, <clears throat> that this is the hem you want because once you've pressed it, it's hard to get rid of. The other thing we have to be careful of is at this vent right here, I want to make sure that I have folded up the exact amount so that when it's hanging, it's not uneven. So we don't want to fold it up so that when it when it's hanging on the body, because these are supposed to be, it's, it's like that. They need to meet perfectly when they're hemmed. So it wants to be like this. Okay, so that's the other thing I'm checking to make sure these are exactly the same, because I haven't pressed this other side yet. And this side needs to come up just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit like that. Let's see. Yep. That's what it needed. So just the tiniest bit. And this is the adjustments we get to make while we're, uh, before we ever stitch so that uh, it lays perfectly on our body when we're done. All right. All right. So we're going to now do our first hemming stitch and we're actually going to do a straight stitch for the hem. The hem is nice and wide. It doesn't have anything pulling against it. And I don't want a zigzag to show on the outside. So for all of my finishing on this, I am going to do a straight stitch. It's currently set for two and a half stitch length. And I'm going to just lengthen that a tiny bit. All right. And then like always, I'm going to test it out on a sample to make sure I like it. So whenever I do any hemming or top stitching or anything like that, you always do it on the right side of the fabric. So I wanna make sure, sorry, my foot control is twisted, um, that I have it set up. I've got it set for the 5 8 inch line. My hem is turned up 3 quarters of an inch. I will stitch on the 5 8 That it means there's gonna be a little, gives me a little extra so I don't have to worry about stitching off the back of the fabric. And let's just see how this, straight stitch looks and see if I want to lengthen a little bit and of course we will back stitch on this you get super lightweight fabric so we kind of got to keep our eye on it like the lighter the weight the fabric the more likely your needle could push it down into your machine um, and of course I've got a super wide foot too I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch just so I can see how it looks on this machine on this fabric all right, so here's the back. Here's the front of the stitch. And I think it's too close together. I want a little bit longer stitch. So I am going to lengthen my stitch even more. I think I'm going to go to about 315. All right. And this time, it doesn't really matter where I stitch. I just want to check it out and make sure I like the look of it. And do another. Quick run. Oops, I only got one thread. All right. And I do like that better. I know it's going to be a little hard to see because the machine backlights. Let me see if I can get that in an angle where you can kind of see it. But that, I definitely like the little bit longer stitch. So that's what I'm going to sew with. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take my garment and sure all my threads and tails are out of the way. I'm going to line it up on the 5 8 inch line like this. Okay. And always straighten your fabric out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm going to just show you it's kind of how the setup looks. And we're ready to sew. And I'm take I'm usually pretty speedy, but I'm going to take this slow for because I have a fabric that can stretch, and because it's so lightweight, and because my needle 
or my the toes of my foot are so wide there's not a lot of stability right next to the needle and so taking it slow is a is a good idea the other thing I could have done and I should have done is put my straight stitch foot on here that puts a lot more stability right at the foot and I actually think I'm going to switch out feet real quick hold on I've done the hem all the way around and all that's left is the little vent so I'm going to just pull this out on the right side so you can see how it looks this is my first time making this pattern so I will kind of tell you what I think when I'm done one thing I can tell you right now is I don't love the neckline I think it's too loose and I'm I'm gonna give it a press but after I press it if I still feel like it's too loose um, I may take it out and make it smaller or we may do a little top stitch so that it doesn't continue to flop over which is what it's sort of doing now so we're going to lay this flat and I'm going to press just a little bit. My iron may have gone to sleep while we were hemming. Let's see. I'm not going to press it so that there's a fold there. I'm just trying to get a little bit. I'm also making sure to press the seam allowance down so that it doesn't um, flip up. That'll help keep the neckline flat and keep it from flipping up. And I may do some top stitching too. Alright, so for sure I should have made that narrower than the pattern called for. The pattern just made it it's just a little large, but that does help to press it. So I think I'll press the whole neckline and I probably will top stitch the, if I top stitch the seam allowance down, so I do a little top stitch along here, that'll also keep it from flipping. So back to the hem. Here's our hem that we just did. And can you see this? That's the difference between the top and the bottom pulling and actually I can feel the thread pulls a little bit too so I'm going to give it a little tiny stretch and a little tiny press and if it doesn't go away we're going to take out those stitches but if it does go away and I think it's going to I can kind of feel it with my fingers that it's just from being at the machine yep quick press and it's a happy happy hem so that's all I need to do for that so now we're going to do our vent. Whenever I finish a big thing like a wide hem like this or something, I inspect it before I go on to the next thing so I don't end up having a mistake or something I don't like a couple steps back and I'll have to unsew in multiple areas. So this um, examining as you go is always good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a haircut here, trim off these extra threads, and I'm going to pull this back. And I want to make sure that this does not hang down. Let me see if you can, yeah. See this right here? See how that wants to hang down? I'm actually going to pin up here first. I'm going to pin all the way up at this seam first. The pin in that. And then that may pull that up a little bit because of the shape. And it does. But see how it wants to, there is the, the fabric wants to lay flat with its grain line or the way it's woven together and this is actually cut beyond the natural grain of the fabric and the fabric wants to keep going back to its to its natural state and so we're going to have to kind of pin it into submission here and it may be just off a tiny bit in the back so that it lays flat because it's not real the fabric itself is not super happy about it and I'm going to sew this um, like I did before on the right side this is going to be again a, about five eighths of an inch I'm going to put quite a few pins in it because it does just want to pull the fabric itself it has a its own natural thing it wants to do just like if your hair always curls to the left and you want to make it curl to the right <coughs> 
fabric can be like that too. See how it's making that twist? That's because of the fabric. The fabric is knitted and the cut are not exactly the same, which is intentional. And that's why we, we come in as the sewist and pin it to make it right. So when it hangs though, it should hang nice. Now I'm gonna turn this over and look and see. If it looks like it's not gonna hang right, You can see how it has those little shapes right there. Can you see? All right, at the vent, I found an issue when I went to sew it, so I wanna show you. Because I had sewn at the serger, that little U shape or that little L at the edge that kind of cricked over, when I went to turn it to sew, no matter what, it would not lay flat. See, it should lay nice and flat like this. And the reason is because the way the pattern was designed was to be sewn with an open seam. And because I didn't have an open seam, I had surged it shut, that wouldn't happen. So can you see here, I've actually made a little cut right at where the U was or where that little leg L was, just a little bit. That's my seam allowance width. Now, if this were a woven fabric, we'd have to zigzag or do something. This is a knit, and I can see that super dark, hold on. This is a knit, and because it's a knit, it doesn't fray. Um, I, you could still zigzag it, which is not a bad idea to zigzag that little edge right there so it just doesn't pull apart. Um, but if, if this were in a high stress area, I would worry about it. This is going to be low on the hip. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, but now be, I can open it up flat and stitch it. So now that's what I'm going to do. And again, you want to sew it right side up. I want to make sure that I don't have, see how that wants to hang down? That's just the nature of the fabric, so I'm going to make sure that does not happen. I lift up my foot, and I'm going to do this one just a little less than 5 eighths, or real close to it, but not quite. I'm going to put my thread under the foot. I like to start with it that way. All right. And I'm going to start right at the needle. So my fabric, <coughs> lines up right behind the needle. I'm gonna sink my needle so you can see. Okay, so there's, see the fabric edge and the needle edge? So I'm gonna take just a couple stitches. Now here's my pin. I'm gonna take it out now, back stitch those few stitches. Doesn't take much back stitching. And now I'm gonna stitch forward. And this is super soft, and I'm just really making sure nothing gets caught. I can feel where the surging stitch is. It doesn't want to move. And that's the, the fabric itself. There we go. Now it's happy. So I'm gonna just go real slow. Because this is soft, it kind of wants to pull away from where I'm stitching. and. You'll end up with a piece that doesn't get sewn or a little, not really a hole, but where it'll want to flip around. And whenever I sew, I'm constantly straightening my fabric up. I apologize for the dog barking. All right, and this is the vent. And I'm going to sew all the way up. I'm going to actually flatten this out so you can see. Here's my vent. I don't know if you can hear all the noise. Up, something's going on upstairs. All right. And I have this. I don't know if you can see this, but I pinned on the wrong side. Bad idea. That's an easy way to hit a pin. I'm going to pull it out and then this pins in the way too. So what we're going to do, this is our vent right here, and I want to make sure my, I'm going to look and see, this is the back, so I want to make sure my seam goes this direction. This is, wait a minute, let me make sure I did that right. Yep, this is the back piece. So now as I come up here, here's the vent end, there's the little end. I'm going to sink my needle at the vent end. I'm going to 
going to do this. And I'm going to sew straight across. And there's a pin right there. These are all pinned backwards right there. Okay. And now I suck my needle again, turn, and there's my 5 8 inch line. And now we're going to stitch down the other side. It needs ironed, and I can tell I stretched it a little on this side. I'm actually going to re-sew this whole little section. See that? It wasn't pinned right, and it didn't catch. So I'm going to unsew that and re-stitch it, and I'll show you in just a second. Okay, we have one last little thing to do, and it's on the sleeve where the serging ended. Um, because you can't backstitch on a serger, and this is the only part of the garment that wasn't crossed with another stitch to seal it, I uh, went in, and I haven't trimmed my threads yet, but I went in and I just zigzagged back and forth right over that little end of the stitch, just a couple stitches on both sleeve ends so that it's nice and secure. And that's how my sleeve looks at this underarm seam, and it won't pull apart and I don't have to worry about the stitches coming out. So don't forget to do that if you do a lace edged sleeve with your serging stitch with your overlock.